Welcome to Cannabis Health Radio, a podcast where we share stories from people around the world who are using cannabis as medicine. The information is meant to raise awareness about the health benefits of cannabis, which should not be taken as medical advice. Now, here are your hosts, Ian Jessup and Corey Yelland. Welcome to episode 232 of Cannabis Health Radio. I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Elland. Nearly 20 years ago, our guest today was involved in a serious trucking accident early one morning and declared dead. Fortunately, he survived, in the, but in the ensuing years, he developed multiple cancers along with other health issues. But his use of cannabis is probably the main reason he's with us today. And joining us from Texas is Dave Knighton. Dave, thank you very much for doing this. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Dave, uh, without the use of cannabis, do you think you'd be alive today? No, sir. Uh, I don't believe it all. Uh, I was given six months, four times, and three months, once. And uh, good old cannabis don't play that. <laughs> Dave, take us back to October 4th of 1990 and tell us about your trucking accident. I was driving a uh, running team, uh, and I was driving, only been driving about five hours. And uh, this guy was letting his girlfriend drive the company truck on the interstate so she could practice, so she could get her license and they could become a team. And of course, driving for J.B. Hunt, when she pulled over on the side of the road, anyways, I jumped ahead of myself. She pulled over on the side of the road and the rest, or the off-ramp to the rest area that was brightly lit. And she didn't know about her trailer, so she left her trailer angled out, blocking over three quarters of the right lane. Uh, of course, I was in the right lane, driving for J.B. Hunt, governed at 55. Uh, so I had it hammered down. I had a pool transport truck pass me on the left, uh, incredible driver. Uh, about the time the front of his trailer got in with the front of my rig, which was a cab over, no nose. Uh, I saw a big dark shadow, lights reflected off the back of the trailer and made impact in an, an instant. Uh, took off the entire right side of my rig, the entire top of my rig, and crushed me under 79,552 pounds of gross weight in my seat. And my load smushed me from behind. Uh, my co-driver, luckily enough, uh, climbed out with a broken neck and broken back, but he was able to climb out. Uh, they declared me dead on the scene and left me under there for two and a half hours while he got a helicopter in to raise the trailer off of me. By raising the trailer off of me like that and then lifting me out by helicopter and straightening my body out, it caused my heart to actually stop. And I went into convulsions in the air and luckily, the fire chief and assistant fire chief from Princeton, Illinois, came to the scene. And they did the emergency tracheostomy because you couldn't tell what was what on my head. And uh, saved my, you know, brought me back. Uh, they sent me to Rockford Memorial, Rockford, Illinois, because uh, Princeton didn't have a trauma unit capable of handling the brain damage. And, uh, uh, I was in a coma for three months when I'm told there. Of course, I don't remember anything about it. But I was in a coma for three months there, and uh, Michael Hunt, founder and owner of J.B. Hunt, treated me like his own son and had me flown to uh, Del Oro Rehabilitation, Neuro Rehabilitation in Houston, Texas. And uh, he got the best neuro rehabilitation uh, physician in the world, Dr. Zeev Kaliski. He's from Israel, where at that time, for 30 years, they'd been using uh, cannabinoid treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had me on a bunch of different narcotics and stuff so much that I couldn't function because uh, I was so wasted from all the narcotics. Uh, and it wasn't helping the vertigo vestibular disorder, which is from the head injury, which causes everything to spin. And you have no equilibrium at all. Uh, which caused nausea, and I was camping by the toilet. And uh, I had a friend of mine come in and handed me just a joint and said, try this, where he was from, Columbia. 
they'd always been doing that. And I took one hit, the nausea was gone. Took the second hit, the pain was gone. And I was dancing. Was this the first time that you ever used cannabis? No, ma'am. Uh, I started, oh, Lord, uh, I was the summer between the ninth grade and the 10th grade of high school. Okay. Uh, I started smoking with my friends, uh, recreationally, of course. Uh, but I'd gone through the army and so on and so forth. So you have to put it down, uh, provide for your family. So I did, but, uh, and my resistance was real low when he, when I, you know, was in that, they had a uh, JB hunt was paying for an apartment for me mm-hmm. for Outback. So I could stay in Houston and continue going to Del Oro, which was my, I was lucky. I was very lucky. What was it? What were you like after the accident when you when you got out? You said you were in an apartment. What was your body like? How did you feel? Oh, in incredible pain. Uh, I had impact arthritis, which most people have never heard of impact arthritis because the impact kills the person that you know that receives it. Uh, but it didn't kill me. And uh, oh man, it was terrible. Spinning, uh, couldn't function. Uh, and the pain was oh incredible. I always have a headache, twenty four and seven, every day, every night, unless I have cannabis. I have cannabis, no arthritis pain, no vertigo at all. Wow. Uh, no head. Uh, it's just incredible. So if you, can't, Dave, if you don't, if you don't have the cannabis, does your vertigo come back? The vertigo comes well. Vertigo will come back so quick. It, it takes quite a bit of time mm-hmm. for my nanograms, which is the measurement of THC and the cannabinoids in your blood. Uh, Dr. Kaliski found out that I was using cannabis instead of taking all the narcotics because I was putting uh, bottles of narcotics in garbage bags. And when I told him about it, I brought the garbage bags to his desk. And I said, this is what I haven't been doing. And I handed him a joint and said, this is what I have been doing. <laughs> he already said I was a miracle and told the world I was a miracle. I want to tell him why I was a miracle. Because, well, uh, I was not supposed to live through that. Nobody else did. And uh, it's yeah. been incredible. Yeah, I went back on the road myself as an owner-operator at CATS, Knight & Associates Transportation Services. And Michael Hunt was my mentor. He was telling me how to do it. Never never gave me a bad anything. I mean, he was straight up with me and he taught me how to get contracts and so on and so forth. And so I had more freight than I could possibly haul. So I was trying to bring on owner operators to run my freight for me. So I got move more freight. And I I told them as long as they drove like me, uh, the way I was taught by Michael Hunt, uh, they could make as much money as me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd make, had to freight and they, no, nobody could run that hard. <clears throat> Dave, when did you first uh, develop your first cancer? When were you diagnosed with that? Well, when uh, I was, I'd been moved down to Del Oro, uh, and Dr. Kaliski was, and I think Dr. Casey was putting my face back together, or my head back together, and they found uh, cancer, first cancer eating through my skull right above my left eye. Uh, if they hadn't, if I hadn't been in that wreck, it would have gotten to my skull and or gotten through my skull and killed me. Uh, so God works in mysterious ways, don't He? What was the diagnosis, that uh, Dave? They said that. Uh, uh, well, when they found it, I was asleep for a long time, but uh, they said that they found that the cancer, the bone cancer, eating through my skull right there. So was it actually bone cancer, or was it uh, melanoma that had spread into the bone? Do you know? I don't think so. Uh, Army don't check things like that, uh, especially too much sun. <laughs> mm. But at any rate, so you, you so you had this cancer that was in your bone. Right. That was my first one they found. It was in my skull right there. Uh, and they, they took it out as they were putting me back together, which, like I say, I was just lucky. I've been lucky all my life. And uh, then, let's see, where was it? Oh, it was in my face right here. You see this mangled mess. Uh, I went to the VA to get 
right? It took me four and a half years to get the VA to recognize that this was cancer. And all the VA was saying, if you don't stop using cannabis, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stop you from getting VA benefits. I said, you promise? <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can see uh, on the monitor here when we're, we're talking to you, you have a scar on your left eye area. Is that where they, yeah, is that where they took it out? We had uh, six interns uh, do this, professor not there, and uh, uh, they didn't, they, they scraped the cheekbone because it was on the cheekbone right there and uh, got out what they thought they could. By the time they had actually done the surgery, it already metastasized into my face. And, uh, I mean, in my skull, I mean, deep. And, uh, I mean, behind my eyes and stuff, I get, uh, you ever get brain freeze from eating too much ice cream? Oh, yeah. I was getting that every five minutes. I mean, hard. Like, I was chug-a-lugging ice cream like crazy. And, uh, but I, I used, uh, Cannabis and cannabis oil uh, to deal with the pain. Uh, I'd moved. I went to uh, Yellowstone National Park to work there where I met my second wife and got me. That's how I got into Washington State. That's where she was from. And uh, that's where I became the 17th member of the Cannabis Coalition was in Washington State. We wanted to. We, we were just looking for medical. That's all we wanted was to get medical legal in Washington State so we wouldn't have to stay alive illegally. And uh, that's that's where I got my, well, I had a prescription in Montana. Uh, I found out while I was up there uh, that I could get a prescription in Montana. And uh, so I got my prescription and they would bring out my medicine to me to Yellowstone. Uh, so that was working great. And then we went to Washington State, and uh, but I became a member of the Cannabis Coalition, mm-hmm. and uh, I went to Walla Walla, Washington, to the VA, closest VA to us. We were living in uh, Tri Cities, Washington, Pasco, and uh, I went to uh, the Walla Walla VA, and. Uh, uh, they took out, uh, they did, I was doing for a colonoscopy, was what I was going for. And they showed it up, put the camera up there, and then put the camera down my neck. And they found 27 polyps in my colon and 21 in my esophagus. And they took them out. They also took uh, three foot of lower intestine from the lower intestine cancer. Uh, and these were these were interns also. They didn't know what the effect would be uh, losing three foot of lower intestine. I never heard of it, so I didn't know what to expect. And luckily, it didn't have, I can't eat as much now, but it, other than that, it didn't have any effect. Uh, but that was the main reason I would go into a clinical situation like that would be to get masses out. And that's it. I don't want them. I don't want the radiation, don't want the chemo, that stuff is poison. So did they what get would, all the counts here, Dave? I doubt it. <laughs> this mm. is the VA we're talking about here. Uh, no, uh, I believe that uh, the oil, because I in Washington State, after we got it legal, uh, we had a friend named Billy, and he was my mentor. I could grow 15 plants my own. And uh, we made our own oil in this little shop he had in the backyard. Uh, well, I grew in his backyard because I didn't have a yard. And uh, he showed me how he taught me going by Rick Simpson's method, uh, how to do it. And so I had abundance of oil uh, after they did that surgery. And you were and taking this oil for your cancer? You were taking it for pain or for both? All of it. Uh, cancer, pain. Uh, vertigo, the whole nine yards. Mm. Uh, plus, I wasn't seeing in color after the head injury and the brain damage. I couldn't see anything but black and white, different levels of gray. But now I can see the rainbow colors. I can't see like maroon 
you know, blends of colors, mm. but I can see uh, basic colors now, and that because of the oil. Uh, How much oil are you taking a day, Dave? I was trying to do what uh, Rick said, you know, and I was trying to do a gram a day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I couldn't. I just, uh, in Washington State, I had an abundance because we could grow our own. Uh, but me and the second broke off, and uh, I went to the greater Seattle area and uh, lived in a tent for a while. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it kind of perturbed her that I was happier living in a tent uh, than <laughs> living with her. But uh, in Washington State or in uh, Seattle area, uh, for a while I was living on the streets, uh, but the VA found me and got me an apartment in Federal Way. And, uh, but anyways, in Washington State, uh, being on disability, uh, Corey knows what I mean, being on disability, I couldn't afford to pay for my medicine as I needed it because in the greater Seattle area, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I thought it was. Uh, so I could only do, I did as much as I could, uh, maybe a half, uh, maybe not even that much, but it worked. Uh, have you ever I, gone through a day, Dave, where you have not had cannabis? I have, but not voluntarily. Uh, yeah. I, if I go without cannabis, flour or oil, flour will work. Uh, just helps the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Oil, uh, but so on a per, on a perfect day, Dave, if you've got like the supplies, are you are you doing both smoking of flour and ingesting oil? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just, so what 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 would a like, typical day look like for you then, as far as cannabis use? Here in Texas, seeing as I'm retired, my son, I was in. Seattle area. My son called me and asked me to come down so he and both his wife and him could work. And they needed a babysitter, which I found mind blowing that he wanted me to be a babysitter. Uh, so I came down here to help my son. Uh, I actually forgot what your question was. Uh, the question was, what does a day look like, a typical day look like for you as far as cannabis use? Well, I always wake up ahead of everybody else, and uh, I'll uh, usually either vape or, or put it under my tongue, and depending on if I have the wax or the pins. Uh, and if I don't have the oil, I'll I'll smoke uh, flour before everybody gets up, and I just maintain that level, you know, throughout the day. And you can't tell, besides looking at my face, you can't tell by my you know the way I move that I'm partially paralyzed on my left side. Uh, you can't tell it. You can't tell that I have impact arthritis. Uh, although uh, my last doctor said that it was only in my left hip now. So, so he's saying that the, the arthritis is healed in places in your body? Well, it was in every joint in my body, and now it's mm. on my left hip, according to um, my local doctor here. Do you, do you feel and see a difference? I do actually very much. Uh, it's just gotten better and better and better uh, over the years. Uh, mm. And you're doing high THC oil, correct? Definitely, definitely. Full plant yeah. extract, uh, high THC, higher to better. Uh, it works so beautiful. All them narcotics they had me on, uh, the VA had me on, eight to seven to eight major narcotics, uh, Demerol, uh, Oxycontin, I mean. It change it up so I wouldn't build resistance, and I, I build resistance quick. Uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't function on that stuff. Do they know at the VA that you're uh, you're taking cannabis? I do now. <laughs> yeah, I do now. Are they okay with it? They really don't have a choice. Uh, I'm not in the army anymore, so they can't court martial me no more. Uh, mm -hmm. They're. They're a service for me. I earn the honorable discharges, and they can't do nothing. Uh, they can bitch. They can moan. 
Dave, it was uh, great to talk to you. You're really a testament to the use of cannabis, uh, given the fact that uh, you've had so many cancers and you were supposed to be dead uh, in October of 1990. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to tell your story. Thank you for having me. Corey, it's interesting that Dave deals with the VA in the U.S. And have you had people who deal with the VA in the U.S. who use cannabis? Yes, lots of them. Lots and lots of them. Lots and lots. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, um, is it common for the VA, I mean, we're both in Canada, so how yeah. do we know? Is it common for the VA to encourage people to get off cannabis and get on pharmaceuticals? Mm, I've sort of had mixed response from the people that uh, that I have. Um, there are a number that don't even say anything, mm-hmm. even when they're getting like positive results. You know, they just keep their mouth shut. Um, I know others that have come forward and said, "Yeah, we are using cannabis," and they've had mixed reviews. Some have uh, almost been threatened. And others um, have been encouraged to continue using cannabis. If it's working for you, great. You know, one of the other things I want to talk about, Corey, is the fact that on YouTube and on Cannabis Health Radio, our podcast, we've been listened to well over a million times. I think uh, 600,000 on the website. And uh, Mark in Belgium was telling me that we've been listened to on YouTube over 600,000 times. So that's 1.2 million people. Hmm. And we don't have as many, um, people haven't posted as many comments as we'd like. Uh, All our comments that have been posted are five stars for what we do. And it's great. So if some of those 1.2 million listeners can post a good comment about Cannabis Health Radio, that can move us up in the rankings, both on uh, iTunes and on Google Play. And Corey, um, I had some statistics, which I put on the back of a piece of paper. They're right there. Yep. Uh, The most listeners are in the United States. 47% of people who listen to Cannabis Health Radio are in the U.S. Canada comes next with close to 20% of listeners. That's followed by the UK, Australia, Nigeria, Ireland, South Africa, Thailand, Spain, and India. Those are the top 10 countries who listen to Cannabis Health Radio. And people who have listened to Cannabis Health Radio come from 88 countries around the world. Wow. Which is really remarkable. So if we change one life by somebody hearing this, it's worth it. So even if all of those listeners... Tell one person the potential of cannabis to change their life. Yeah, it would be marvelous because Corey and I, (laughs) we're not in this for the money. Nope. Because there is no money in it, very little. And uh, we are looking for sponsors and uh, we are based in Canada. And I'm not sure we can't advertise product. Product Um, by product, what do you mean? Like the product that's sold by licensed producers. No, no. I think that's all yeah. all uh, still up in the air anyway. Yeah, and there's going to be a review of it uh, this fall. So we're still in the elementary stages of legalization in Canada and other jurisdictions, particularly in the U.S., are well ahead of us. But um, we're working on it. As someone said, it's a first step. Um It's like taking one step forward and two steps back, or vice versa. Anyway, we appreciate your your listening to Cannabis Health Radio. We'd greatly appreciate it if you could share it with your friends and followers on your uh, social media channels. And um, we will be back next time with another edition of Cannabis Health Radio. But first, I'd like to thank Ron Zahar of Rowan Sound here in Victoria for producing this and... uh, Letting us use his studio. Letting us use his studio. We greatly appreciate it, Ron, and uh, we'll always be in debt to you. And one day we'll be able to return the favor. Here's hoping. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll be back next time with another edition of Cannabis Health Radio. Thanks for listening to Cannabis Health Radio. 
For more information and to search previous podcasts, visit our website, cannabishealthradio.com. Subscribe so you don't miss new episodes. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This podcast is made possible by donations from our listeners. If you found the information helpful, please consider making a donation in any amount through our website. You can also help us share our message by leaving a review on your podcast listening platform. We are very grateful for your support. Thank you.